Hi, Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Tuesday, July the 19th. Well, the Republican National Convention reality show continues in Cleveland, and it's uh, delivered just as much as you might expect from a Donald Trump production. Uh, they had a bit of chaos on the floor yesterday, brought to an end by a heavy-handed gavel pounding by Representative Steve Womack of, of Arkansas, who put down an effort to uh, rise up against the Trump convention. Uh, Tom Cotton spoke to the Republican National Convention last night. It was a flat speech. It was mostly about himself. He uh, managed not to say the words Donald Trump in a speech uh, at the Republican National Convention that will nominate Donald Trump for president. It's sort of interesting. Perhaps he's looking to the future, as we said yesterday. But the day ended up being stolen by the candidate's wife, who gave a speech that happened to include several lines from exactly the speech Michelle Obama gave at the Democratic National Convention in 2008. Rather than put this down to a misunderstanding or blame it on the speechwriter, the Trump campaign has said that she did not commit plagiarism. And of course, the clear transcript of the speech shows otherwise. Sentences were copied for whatever reason. I don't think it would be the crime of the century, except the Trump campaign has managed to make it worse. She's been defended, among others, by Attorney General Leslie Rutledge, who went on CNN this morning to say, why these were just use of common phrases, and as an English major at the University of Arkansas, she knows plagiarism when she sees it, and she says, this simply wasn't it. Well, she's certainly doing her job carrying, carrying baggage for Donald Trump. Not very believable, and it does make you wonder a little about the, about, about the English uh, majors at the University of Arkansas. She's representative of them, but she's doing her bit. She has national ambitions herself. Back home, there were some changes at the governor's office, although Asa Hutchinson will be giving his speech tonight at the Cleveland event. And that is that Betty Gooman, who's been a senior advisor to the governor and been with him throughout his political career, is moving over to become head of the Youth Services Division that was vacated uh, under somewhat mysterious circumstances several months ago by Marcus Devine. Also promoted in this move is Ruth Bell, the wife of the former Republican legislator Nate Bell. He's now an independent. Uh, she's she's going to be a senior advisor to the governor at $80,000 a year. It's funny how a family that talks all the time about the perniciousness of big government and how it wastes money just loves those jobs on the government payroll. Over at federal court today, Ted Sewell, who once operated a multi-million dollar community and residential mental health organization for use, is taking the stands in the trial that accuses him of bribery, paying people to get advantages in state business for the Medicaid finance services he provided. He's saying he's a victim of religious discrimination by the state. He ran the Lord's Ranch, said he had to rename it because of the religious influence he tried to bring to these poor troubled youths. He's making himself out to be a victim of the system, not somebody who took advantage of the system by handing out money lavish, lavishly to people who could help him. I urge you to take a read today at the ArkansasBlog.com of Ernie Dumas' column this week about the death penalty in Arkansas and how the Supreme Court stood the Arkansas Constitution on its head by ignoring the provision that the state must reveal all expenditures and who gets the money. The state is uh, ignoring the Constitution and not saying where it's getting drugs to perform executions through lethal injections. That's because drug companies won't supply the drugs if their names are going to be associated with a death process. Uh, you'd hope the Supreme Court might reconsider its bad precedent in this because this isn't just about the death case, it's about the future and the ability of the legislature to uh, ignore the Constitution and other times when it chooses to do so. Yesterday, Matt Campbell, the lawyer and Blue Hog Report blogger, filed another ethics complaint. Some of his past ones have been very productive. This one is trying to get the Arkansas nursing home lobby to disclose its expenditures and sources of revenue in its effort to pass a constitutional amendment that will make it hard to sue, nur sue nursing homes for negligence, abuse, and malpractice. They've uh, funneled money through a, through a dummy corporation. Matt Campbell says the state law requires them because of the amount they've spent more than a quarter million so far to provide more disclosure than they've provided to date. Uh, we'll see how that goes. The Democratic Party filed a lawsuit in Washington County today. It says that uh, the Republicans are trying to come up with an artifice to fill a vacancy for the Washington County judges race. Mike O'Neill, a state representative, was going to run, but he decided he had business and family pressures that prevented him from running. By the time he dropped out, it was too late to replace him under the state law that says there must either be a death or somebody moves out of the district to, to choose another candidate. Neal now says, oh, he's going to move, but he hasn't moved yet. The, the Democratic Party argues that this is an unfair manipulation election process, wants a, a judge to put a stop to it. And finally, this isn't a local news story, but for a little 
uh, happiness at the misfortune of others. I have to pass along the news that New York Magazine is reporting that popular Fox News uh, star Megyn Kelly has told investigators that Roger Ailes, the mastermind of Fox's news is uh, conservative news programming, uh, sexually harassed her once some years ago. This adds to a number of other allegations against Ailes, particularly by Gretchen Carlson. News is rising that Ailes is going to be forced to resign by perhaps the 1st of August. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back tomorrow.